Greetings, everyone. I hope you're all doing okay. Uh, continuing to do okay. Um, so back up from a hiatus, uh, talking about the Cold War. Uh, the longest, well, conflict. It was a conflict. I, it, it was just not uh, not an all-out war. The longest conflict of the 20th century between uh, two rival superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. Um, I grew up at the tail end of the Cold War. Uh, I remember, I don't remember bomb drills, but I remember like the idea of the Soviet Union being, in Ronald Reagan's terms, the, the evil empire. Uh, I remember, you know, as a kid hearing this and, you know, as kids do, you know, think that, oh, they really are evil um, without knowing, you know, too much of the uh, context until I was older. Um, so uh, this sort of us versus them has played out uh, in large part in the Cold War. Um, just some backstory here. Uh, the Soviet Union and the United States obviously were allies in World War II. Uh, they had helped defeat Germany, uh, and they had helped defeat Japan by August of 1945. Um, a year later, a year or two later, the uh, conflict between the Soviet Union and the United States had uh, dissolved. Uh, or I had the, the conflict hadn't dissolved. The, the conflict escalated. Uh, the, the tensions uh, escalated between the two. Um, this had to do with ideology, uh, the, uh, the belief in the American side in free market capitalism, in uh, democracy, uh, and then, of course, on the uh, Soviet side, the belief in communism. And those two ideas are pretty much antipodal. Um, we've already talked about this. I'll just review here uh, that uh, both um, superpowers had a hand in dividing Germany. So uh, at the end of World War II, you had Germany divided into four zones, each occupied by an allied force, the United States, Britain, France, although France, is, well, France was not involved, involved in Yalta, uh, in the Soviet Union, and as well as the Berlin, the capital of Germany, was divided into east or west. Uh, here's the map again. Uh, you've got the United States here in the south, Munich, uh, the USSR. That is the Union of so Soviet Socialist Republics. If you don't remember what the USSR means, I grew up remembering this, uh, but it, it might be foreign to some of you because it collapsed in the early 90s. Uh, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics is what that was called. Uh, the sickle and the hammer, the uh, hammer of communism and the flag. Uh, Great Britain here in the north with Hamburg uh, and France here with Mainz and the eastern, uh, southeastern side of Germany. Um, so you have this division of Germany. I remember growing up learning about East and West Germany. Um, so I've already talked about this, uh, the West, this belief in the free market economy. So the Western, Western part of Germany would advocate uh, for a free market, uh, con uh, free market economy and liberalism writ large. Me liberalism in the sense of democratic, uh, democratic social order, um, not so much uh, present day liberalism. Uh, but uh, democratic government, uh, basic freedoms, idea of human freedoms, this is all outlined in the uh, United Nations. That Eleanor Roosevelt had a hand in the Declaration of Human Rights. The West, or the East, I'm sorry, uh, was communism. Uh, we've talked about communism already, um, sort of a collective identity, uh, the idea of the proletariat, a dictatorship of the proletariat, uh, taking over from the bourgeoisie the business owners, capitalists. And we've talked about sort of the ironies of, ca of communism. Uh, I remember if you, if you ever read the Communist Manifesto, um, there's a passage that's very curious uh, that says that, you know, communism should break out in capitalist, heavily capitalist society. So Marx thought that communism would break out in Germany. Uh, and I mean, he was writing it, I think in Britain, but which is heavily capitalist, but he thought it would break out in Germany. And where it broke out was Russia, which was still very much a feudalist uh, state in some cases. So it didn't have a modern economy. It didn't have a modern capitalist economy. It wasn't industrialized. So there's a passage in the Communist Manifesto that talks about if you're a feudalist country, you need to instate capitalism only to, then to overthrow it. So it's like, the hell is that? Um, it's just, it's just very, it's a very bizarre, you know, you have to set up something in order to overthrow it. it it's, it's just a very bizarre philosophy. If you can check that out yourself, don't take my word for it. 
that's in the Communist Manifesto. It's at the tail end. Um, it's not a very long book, a very thick book. Uh, but uh, so the idea of communism. Remember, communism is an end state. It's not uh, like a. It's never established. The, and the true Marxist will say the communist. We have never achieved communism. And the Soviets talk about this. Like Dmitry Shostakovich in the '60s is like we're heading toward communism. It's this sort of perfect state where there's no capital at all, and you work uh, for enjoyment, and you have all your needs met. Uh, there's a classless society. That's what communism was supposed to be. But uh, it gets uh, to the to the mar true Marxist. It gets wrapped up in the, in the dictatorship of the proletariat, and it never it's supposed to dissolve, and it never does. Now a Marxist will say it has that time to dissolve. Um, you know, uh, people on the on the right tend to criticize this as just utopian fantasy. Uh, so anyway, this is the belief in the Soviet Union. They're not terribly interested in uh, human rights. If you read about the tail end of the Soviet Union, they did everything from uh, quashing all history uh, whatsoever. So you couldn't um, even dig into the archives to find out the Soviets were killing their own people. Uh, Stalin was killing his own people. Um, 60 million or so, I think that's the number. Uh, so, you, but they, they covered that up and said, well, the Nazis were doing it. And, and anybody who was caught researching this was uh, sent to the gulags. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, it's, you know, freedom is not what you get uh, when you have this kind of system. So anyway, this is the Stalinist era. Um, uh, Churchill calls... Uh, the fall of the uh, the, uh, the Soviet Union, the fall, the fall of the Iron Curtain, these sort of this this uh, uh, Western Wall in Europe, in Eastern Europe, um, calls it the Iron Curtain, uh, and defining communism as the new enemy. So and this is typical with conflict. You know, once a conflict is ended, there's a new enemy. That's so there's a new there's a new other that arises to take its place. Here's a uh, sort of a stupid uh, photograph of the Iron Curtain. You got it black here, um, here in the north, and then uh, this, these are the Soviet occupied territories, um, Poland. Um, you know, just, uh, just east of Sweden and uh, Finland. Um, and Switzerland here, neutral Switzerland and Austria. So uh, you have uh, you have this uh, Iron Curtain. Um, <clears throat> that's what Churchill was referring to. Um, nobody wanted a full-out war, and we'll talk about why, uh, with the Soviet Union. Uh, nobody in the United States wanted, uh, at least in the leadership, didn't want this because of what would happen in a Third World War. So you had what was called containment. This is pre President Harry Truman's idea. You try to contain the spread of the Soviet Union. So you sort of, it's a sort of understanding that there's a reality here. They are an empire. Uh, so what we're job, our job is supposed to do is just to prevent it from spreading. Not, not destroy the empire, but prevent it from spreading. So this ends up being a lot of proxy wars. We'll talk about the Korean War as a proxy war um, uh, to prevent... Soviet Union. So you're fighting the Soviets via proxy to prevent them from taking over. The Korean War was a proxy war. Vietnam was a proxy war. Uh, Afghanistan uh, was a proxy war. Not the recent Afghanistan. Afghanistan uh, in the 80s uh, with the Soviet Union. Uh, the, the setting for Rambo 3. I think Rambo 3 was set in Afghanistan. If you ever watch Rambo, a, a good, stupid, you know, uh, Cold War movie. Rocky 4 as well. A good, stupid Cold War movie. Fun, but dumb. Um, so, uh, NATO was established in 1949. This treaty, North, uh, uh, the treaty organization, means that uh, if, if the Soviet Union would attack any, any Western country, then that would be seen as a, a, a first strike. So they would all band together then to fight the Soviet Union. So this is a, a tactic to unite the West against, against the East, against uh, the Soviets. Um, why not fight an all-out war? It had to do with the nuclear uh, nuclear arms race. Um, if you think of world wars as everybody's big guns against the other, um, there's no way that the world would survive a third world war where everybody's big guns are against the other. So um, you had, I remember growing up with some of this, 
the fear of, of nuclear annihilation. Um, the United States so far is the only uh, a country to use a nuclear bomb, I believe, to use a nuclear bomb in warfare against uh, somebody else. I mean, countries have tested it, but nobody's used it uh, against another group of people. Um, the Soviets developed the nuclear bomb, the atomic bomb, and there's a difference between the atomic bomb and the hydrogen bomb. So I, I don't want nuclear bomb is kind of a general term. The atomic bomb in 19, there's a chemistry difference. Uh, <coughs> all right, nuclear chemistry difference. Um, they tested the atomic bomb in 1949, and then this uh, prompts the United States to develop a more powerful hydrogen bomb. Um, and the Soviet Union would then follow with the hydrogen bomb. So you see what happens here. You know, one side, it's just like what happened in World War One with the dreadnoughts. The, uh, you know, Germany will build a dreadnought, Britain will get upset and build two, and then Germany will build another two, and then Britain will build four. So th this, uh, this arms race kicks off. Um, the hydrogen bomb is a, a fusion bomb, so it fuses hydrogen into helium. It's much more powerful, where the atomic bomb splits, usually uranium, splits the atom. So you get some energy when you split the atom. I had some nuclear chemistry in college. I don't remember most of it, uh, how it works chemically, but uh, I, I do know that, uh, that uh, the atomic bomb was uh, fission and uh, the uh, hydrogen bomb is fusion. In the fusion bomb, you get much more of a blast including things like this, the mushroom cloud uh, that reaches high into the atmosphere, uh, leaving fallout for hundreds of miles. Here's just a nice, uh, well, not nice, uh, d comparison. Uh, the atomic bomb would have a, a diameter of about two miles. Look at the hydrogen bomb here, 20 miles. So you could literally wipe out not only the city, but the surrounding countryside. Um, if it were uh, the, the, the suburbs <laughs> with a single hydrogen bomb. So you're talking massive, uh, much more uh, much more powerful, a massive destruction. Um, I'm going to finish up with this video because I'm running out of time. I do want to talk about the duck and cover of the drills um, and the effects of nuclear uh, radiation. So I'll pause here. I'll see you in a few minutes.